now David Mamet's The Anarchist, written in 2012 and performed today, January 18th, 2021, by Penny Arcade and Tammy Face Starlight. Anne, seated at a desk. A telephone is on the desk. An intercom sits on a conference table. Also on the desk are several files, a loosely bound manuscript, and several books. A briefcase sits on the floor. Kathy is standing. Will you sit down? How are you? No, I think I'm well. Thank you for asking. What have you been doing? I've been studying, as usual. And what have you learned? In the larger sense. All right. I hope that I've learned to be reasonable. At least I have studied it most importantly. Most importantly. Yes. Reason more than patience? One might think the pressing study would be patience, but patience, of course, (laughs) implies an end. Patience implies an end. Well, yes. As... One may be patient only for something. Such as? A deferred desire or the cessation of discomfort. Revenge? Well, that would fall within the rubric of desire deferred. And reason teaches? Reason would teach the abandonment of the unfulfillable wish and so of the need for patience. It therefore may be said to be the higher study. Kathy gestures back towards upstage. Hmm. Lovely girl. Yes? In the anteroom, I find when conversation stalls, it never indicates a want of subject. One may always talk about the weather, but some subjects repression. What is it? I'm leaving. Yes, we were expecting that announcement quite some time. Well, everything ends. That is neither a new nor a monumental understanding, but it's true. Anne points to the large manuscript on her desk. I've been reading your book. Is it a book? Isn't it? Well, you are the first to read it. I'm honored. And, you know... I've been thinking of it so long as a, a a manuscript, a work in progress, a collection of... Why would that not be a book? No, I'll take your comment as an endorsement. Thank you. You're welcome, Kathy. If it is a book, it remains only to see what a publisher and what the public... But of course, I am ahead of myself. No, of course it's a book. Anne picks up the manuscript and reads. When he came the first time, he questioned me. Oh, yes. And I said in answer to him, I revere Jesus, though I do not worship him. But I have the utmost respect, and I might say, love for those who do. It's quite beautiful. You chose that phrase purposefully. In order to... To compliment me. No, but I would have, as with much of the book. Thank you. And that was the first meeting. What was the first meeting? You describe here... With... The priest? The meeting with the priest? Yes. The first time? I don't know if that was it. But sometime during that first year. In the first year, yes. Not regularly. He came, of course, as part of the rotation. The rabbi also came during that time. That's right. And the Protestant. Yes. Minister. The word is minister. I forgot a French verb yesterday. The minister. Came regularly. Would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Did they give you breakfast? I wasn't hungry. Who came when? Poor clerks. 
copying notations in the logs no one would see. I saw them. I meant no disrespect. I understand. And during that time, you also met with the rabbi. I met with them all. But particularly? The rabbi. Why particularly? Because? Some people are born into a tradition in which they perhaps feel other than comfortable. They? Or better, they later in life may discover a covenant in which for the first time they find comfort. A covenant? A home, a mate, or a profession. People late in life, for example, may discover their true sexuality or well, the parallels are obvious. Mine dealt with faith. Your revelation. Your revelation. Of Christ. But you continued during the first years to meet with the rabbi. That's right. After you had discovered this new covenant. Do you know? I didn't want to insult him. Really? The others came so seldom, and the rabbi was additionally... Yes? Well, sort of entertainment, faute de mieux. I forgot a French verb yesterday. And you were reading? Actually, I was writing. In French? Yes. What were you writing? Oh, an attempt at a translation. Of your book? Oh, very good. That's right? Yes. An attempt at a translation. But you speak French. I did. Someone asked me, do you play an instrument? I said, no, with some regret. And then remembered that I played the piano all my life. How about that? You spoke French fluently. As one does with the vocabulary of one's interests, a sort of waiter's French. And what were your interests? And the language of theology is rather abstruse. Your interest then was in theology. Well, in hindsight, what else would you call it? You were translating your book. I was attempting to. And you forgot a verb. I did. But you must have had a dictionary. I thought that to use the dictionary would be admitting a, a, <laughs> no, I'm getting old, an unworthiness. But you read widely in French. Well, that was the language of the movement. Of the movement? Yes. Have you read them since? Those books? Those books? Yes. Would they be allowed here? Well, that's a fair question. But do you know? I've thought about them. The books. And in my memory... I couldn't make heads or tails out of them. Today? No, nor sort out their attraction. No, that's not true. They were attractive as they were incendiary. Revolutionary. If you will. In their ideas. Not in their ideas, no. What were they? Finally. They were essentially a sort of chant. Words not meant to misdirect are wasted. Well, there you are. And their absence of meaning allowed us, or we understood them, as a celebration of the transgressive because they had no meaning. They wanted revolution. They? The writer. They wanted, I suppose. And you found it attractive. As the young do. No, it was thrilling. And now? They're quite immoral, don't you think, the French? Tell me, why? They hold the view that the world is an illusion. Is that their view? Oh, yes. No wonder it sparked terrorism. Did it? If nothing has meaning, save what we ascribe to it, what reality is there, for example, in another's suffering, as a result of which we find much tragedy? 
No wonder they tend to lose wars. As in Algeria. Well, yes. Much tragedy. As Guillaume's, for example. Speaking of Algeria. That's right. But the meaninglessness. Let me be more precise. It was facing the meaninglessness which led me to faith. It led you to faith. Because, do you see? They're the same two choices. The same two as? The bureaucrat and her make-work files. To rebel or to submit. And each is unacceptable. Is there a third choice? Thank you. And that is the essence of the book. That the third choice is faith. What else could it be? And to believe in the possibility of another choice is to long for God and to discover it as faith. Faith without certainty. If there were certainty, why would it be faith? Guillaume had faith. Faith? Did he? The growth? He had certainty. The growth of consciousness causing that pain which may only be Although a better rendering would be the growth of conscience, don't you think? It's the same word in French. But conscience here would be the better rendering. You may be right. Yeah, I think you're right. But that was not the translation on the poster. On the poster, no. Not on the poster. Quote, the growth of consciousness causing that pain which may only be expunged through violence. That's what the poster said. Consciousness. Yes. Why? Your point is that a translation as conscience, that conscience must lead to violence, would have been recognized as absurd. That's right. As absurd and monstrous. Monstrous, yes. In any case, as shocking or say certainly more brutal, the original was shocking. And yet? Go on. Many were seduced by it. Many were. And I would assume that it was more seductive in French, which, as you say, is the language of philosophy. Yes. And which additionally carry the romance of being foreign. Well, to the young, the foreign idea is seductive. Why is that? As to the young, everything is foreign, which is why they are the revolutionaries. Because? It's easy. One may easily make things anew according to one's insights. If one possesses no experiences, the French word was seduire, to seduce. To seduce. Seduire. And why would I forget it? It's the same word. It's funny. That was the verb. That's right. And you two spoke it. French. Yes. Guillaume and I. In Algeria. That's right. I wrote of it in... No, I've marked it. <clears throat> Écoute, he would say, which was, to me, a magic incantation. You say he affected not to understand English. That's right. But he did understand. He spoke it perfectly. But... He thought it the language of colonialism. More than French. That's right. But he was fighting the colonialism of the French. Well, retrospectively, of course, it's all irrational. And yet they discount religion as based on faith. You wrote in French. Then. Yes. Did I? The speech. In Algeria. And it was quoted. All right. And published. Published? You knew that. I'm not sure I knew it. That the speech was published? After the, the... You knew that. The pamphlet was found in the apartment. Many things were found in the apartment which were not mine. No, I didn't say the pamphlet was yours. I said the speech. The text of the speech. Yes. That's right. But the pamphlet could have been yours, too. It was essentially yours. As the ideas were mine? 
No, as you held things in common then, didn't you? You did not believe in private property. Oh my. Isn't that what you said? That all pertaining to the individual? I... Even life. The young are easily corrupted. Had no personal meaning. No, I... That possessions, like insights, were the property of all, and as all was property of all, and so could be taken by any. I... Meaning you could take it. It was in the speech. Yes, I said that. Even life. I said it. Did you believe it? People change. Of course. Else. But did you believe it then? What I did. Irrespective of what you did. Tell me, did you believe it truly? I. That nothing was the property of the individual. I don't remember. Do you know, I read the pamphlet. From Algeria. Poetan. Pamphlet. Pamphlet or leaflet. I read it again. Recently. I did. I'm surprised one can still find it. No, it's still read. Not perhaps as it was at the time. Not quite so popular, perhaps. And they still reproduce the poster. Of Guillaume? Though without the quote, which is, I think, a shame. Why a shame? And the pamphlet in anthologies, you must know it. How would I know it? The, the statements, your... They wouldn't allow the book here. No, your estate, your royalties. No, I never held the copyright. Of course, no, it was for the people. That's right. Why is it a shame that the quote is not printed on the poster? as it might reveal the criminality of worshiping the man. Yes, that's correct. And yet you worshiped him. I did. I was wrong. I was infatuated with him. Many were. Why? Because in truth, he freed them. That he freed them from those things to which they should perhaps be bound is, you're correct, a different question. The young are uncertain. They are easily frightened. He set them free, and they were grateful. He set the people free. How are the people different from the state? <laughs> well, that's the province of philosophy. You read philosophy? At school. No, you were asked at the time of your arrest to describe yourself, and you said, a philosopher. All right. On your visa application in French, profession philosophe. You were quite enamored of the French. We all were. He was your lover. He was very beautiful. That's true. Like a beautiful woman. He had that power. You've seen it. One sees it from time to time. Are you tired? No, I'm well. You said you were well, but the doctor reports lately you've complained of being tired. I'm not tired. You said you felt an illness coming on. Question, can you say it's symptoms? Answer, I don't know, I just feel tired. Many people feel that. It's an aspect of age. It has a name. All things have a name, or they would not exist in our consciousness. If they exist without a name, then we must name them at whatever cost. Who wrote that? Yes, I wrote it. What does it mean? Youth is foolish. Youth can and must be controlled. I've said that. For good or ill? As most things. And youth unfettered? Yes, all right. Finish it. Youth unfettered? I do not deny. I've never denied that I said or that I did those things. Never. You, as much as I, have perhaps done things in your life which you regret? What have I done? I don't know. You know. Your actions could not have been as bad as mine, I wouldn't think. I don't know what they were. You say mine could not have been as bad as yours. 
Many have aggrandized this or that minor act, disloyalty, desertion, and thought these fantasies were fantasies unforgivable, and they scourged themselves like the nun with sexual thoughts. But fantasy is not sin. You. But I have actually sinned and have been punished for it. And does that cleanse you? The punishment? No. What could cleanse you? Nothing but Christ. Yes? No. I know they're here. No, I'll tell you. I'm sorry that I'm taking up so much of your time. And I thank you for your time. You're quite welcome. You said that Christ would cleanse you. Christ has cleansed me. How? Truly? Yes, how? Through his blood, which means through repentance. With respect, how would one credit it? I did not ask you to credit it. For, again with respect, one often hears the story. Yes, I understand. Repeat it here. I don't ask you to credit it. But you brought it up. In answer to your question. You wrote that you adore your savior. You'd be within your rights to doubt it. Would I? As you say, it's a common ruse. But I might credit it because of your book. You might. What would impede me? If the book were written to impress, or to delude, or... Yes? Or you might credit it because of my behavior, because of my acts while here. What if they were done to impress? What actions of saints were done to impress? We don't know their motives, or from delusion. The prophets were demonstrably mad. They were mad? They'd seen God. Have you seen God? I would like to see my father. Have you seen God? Your question is if I am mad because I found some understanding. All right, that. That however much we suffer, we could not suffer as completely as he as Jesus. Yes. And is that finding God? I don't know if it's finding God, but I know it's the meaning of the Christ. I would like to see my father. I know. He's unwell. Well, he's dying. Yes, it's been in the press. I would like to talk to him. What would Mrs. Anderson say? Is that important? What would she say? Is she here? Of course. And how is she? What would she say to your request? We know what she would say. And is she incorrect? You say that you'd like to see your father. Yes. After all this time. I'd like to talk to him. About what? About God. And would you bring him your manuscript? No. Why? I believe it would upset him. Why? My father is a Jew. Would he think it heresy? Well, it might be, to his mind, just one more crime. To have changed your covenant. That's right. Is it a crime? No, people change. And you want to talk to him about God? I want to. I, I want. No. You said you want to talk to him about God. I want him to experience grace. Through Christ. No, he won't embrace Christ. Then how would you enable him to experience grace, believing as you do? You're tired. Yes. You didn't have breakfast. They offered it to me. Would you like me to get something? I want to see my father to allow him to forgive me. Is it your intention to publish the book? If I were to be allowed, or of course. Yes. If I were released. In which case? I would need no permission. The royalties. 
The royalties would, under the law, still accrue to the families if I, if I remained. And if you were released? After my father's death, I'm going to assign them the money. The royalties? No, my inheritance. You're going to give them part of your inheritance? No, all of it. That's an extraordinary sum of money. That's right. Does it concern you that the board might consider that a sort of bribe? Perhaps it is. And is it? My motives are sufficiently opaque to me. I doubt the board can see them clearly. I believe the board might consider that a bribe. Then don't tell them. I'm not telling the board. I'm telling you. To influence my decision? Can you conceive of anything that one in my position might do with a different motive? I'm an old woman. I would like to be released. I understand. Upon what grounds? Would you mock me for suggesting kindness? Kindness to the wicked is cruelty to the just. Where is that written? I don't know. It's in the Bible, isn't it? I... It's in Proverbs. I don't know. But you studied the Bible. You're on record as having requested a copy, a, a Bible, some time ago. A concordance Bible to replace... Yes, the other was lost. To continue your studies, it was... Yes. Lost, misplaced, or stolen in your last move. Who would steal a religious book? Someone might with your notes and your name in it. Why? To sell it for quite a bit of money. Anne picks the Bible from her bag and hands it to Kathy. A concordance Bible. Yes, I remember it at the beginning. You may keep it. I remember it, thank you. You're welcome. How? It was advertised in a rare book catalog and it was purchased. Yes. For quite a lot of money and it came to the notice of the board. What happened to the money? What do you think? It went to the officer's family? Eventually, that's correct. Who stole it? I am not permitted to discuss a criminal enterprise with you. Isn't it funny? And who bought it? I... At the auction? Was it an auction? Yes. Whoever bought it, his money, what, was it returned to him? No. Why? as he was party to a crime. But perhaps he didn't know the book was stolen. And perhaps he did. But that seems harsh. In any case... If he didn't know the book was stolen, might the state return the money to him? I don't know the law. Do you recall the notations? While the unafflicted may toy with an entertaining doubt, the blind must believe the number of steps in the staircase cannot vary. Oh, my. And someone made a lot of money selling that? Who are the unafflicted? I'm not sure. Who are the blind? I'm not sure that I wrote it. But who could have written it? Someone who, who took it from me. The thief. Someone who robs is called a thief. Yes, they're called a thief, but it seems harsh that someone who may have purchased it in good faith should suffer. I don't know the law. The officer's family are here? That's right. Well, I always assume that they are. How are they? As you might expect. I always picture them as they were then, as much as I know they aren't. Do you know, I saw the newspapers after one of our meetings eight or nine years ago showing my photo from the time at the apartment. And I thought, oh, poor defrauded reading public, beautiful young totem. What can have become of her? They let you read the papers? Well, sometimes the rules need interpretation. Or the new guards? 
and the new girls, to whom would they look for guidance? And you guide them. If I can. And do you love them? Do I have sex with them? Yes. Do you know, I've always felt your thoughts were fixed in adolescence. How so? On the sin and wonder of your body. Is that adolescence? Oh, yes. But the body grows old, and an appropriate notice of it would lead us to finish with sin and to think on death and what is beyond death. What is beyond death? Christ and the potential of redemption. No, of course. I love them and they loved me. Why should they not? That's a question for you, Anne. But it begins to come back, doesn't it, when someone is being set free? It begins when our possessions are few and we review our thoughts. And what do we find? Regret. What do I regret? <laughs> Would you like to tell me? Do I know? You said, was he your lover? You said, did the women love you? After all this time, you could have had any woman here that you wanted. It doesn't escape you that would have meant breaking my oath. Nonetheless. Do I lack sex? You lack something, which is equal, in your mind, to the lack of sex, and so is signalized by it. And if you name it... When did you take to psychiatry? In Algeria, I was troubled. Guillaume asked me, and I said, no, I don't know what's troubling me. And he said, if you did, what would it be? And so? And so, Anne, so I told him. Be? Because I didn't want to be a coward. To be a coward. No, I knew I was a coward but I wanted to be brave. And what was it that troubled you? What do you think? If it were conscience, why would overcoming it have been an act of courage? Can people change? I don't know. If they changed, could you recognize it? If there were anything that I could do for you, I'd do it. If it were this close and you only had to ask for it, because that's what he had correct, do you see? That it's always close. How do we know it is redemption? Because it begins with shame. That's true, Anne. That's what it means to pray. It means to confess. It's the worst pain. Our Savior himself, Anne, needed help to bear the cross. But he did bear it, Anne. He did, though terrified and thought himself forsaken, like you, like me. I. Yes? No, presently. Please, please apologize to the. and make them comfortable. Well, oh, then we, are we done? Who are the people? And you know who the people are. Am I one of them? Say it was written by another woman. The speech? Yes. And the other woman was you. A man killed and spent his life in anguish. And he asked Christ, if he could forgive a man who had killed. And Christ said? Christ said, no, but you are now another man. For now in me, you are reborn. Are you reborn? You find the concept arrogant. It's quite the opposite. It means acceptance. Of? The human condition. Are you the people? I am of the people. And yet you come from great wealth. I renounced their wealth. 
and I renounce it now and attended prestigious schools and I renounce their teachings and the wealth I renounce my father's wealth I you I understand you might say I'm going to work with the sisters and so you and so I will not require wealth with the sisters why because they will have me I wanted to be cloistered as you are here but of my own choice I fantasized I could trade shame for degradation and wash the privies with my hair to play the piano for them. You said that you had forgotten you studied the piano. And equitation and French when I was young, when it was thought that it was a presumption on the part of a Jew. Listen, all evil regimes press their adherents into monstrous acts as afterwards the actors could not face themselves and so had to collude with the only society which would abide them. To break from those regimes is therefore an act of wrenching. It is a sort of death. I do not require wealth. And so the act of renunciation, you are correct, is perhaps insufficient penance, but it is all I have. You do not require wealth. That's right. As, as I am going to work with the sisters, I was going to say in poverty, but I'm not sure I remember what that word means. Why do you want to work with them? I've told you. Can I dissect myself and find a self-serving intention? Of course. But would it be more true than an altruistic one? Which might be that people are suffering. Should we not do what we can to alleviate pain? And the families of the policemen. Yes. We know that they suffer. Are they of the people? Can they be? Or are the people specifically, but those whom you specify, all others being allowed to suffer? All people suffer. Is that true? You suffer. How do you know? Because I've watched you. How do I suffer? I've told you. Why do I suffer? The question is not what or why one suffers, but what recourse one may have. And the answer is? Submission. To? I've told you that too. Tell me again. Our Savior. And where did you learn that? At the only place it may be learned, the foot of the cross. Yes, but you were born a Jew. Christ was a Jew. Christ is a Jew. And to mock the possibility of salvation is to mock him, whom you profess by the cross around your neck to worship. But you cannot worship him, for to do so is to renounce the worship of your sorrows, which is to say of yourself. Is that so? And when you leave here, having to your mind wasted your life on what you understand as a fool's errand, you will to your mind have nothing, and you know it. Was it a fool's errand? I believe you think it was. But was it? You must say, if you are strong enough to say it, I don't think you are. Why would that be? Which is why you toy with me. How do I toy with you? You've moved my cell. All right. Why have I moved your cell? For out-processing. Which conclusion you arrive at as? You're leaving and you want to conclude here with an act of grace. I understand. What did you plan to do on your release? I've told you. To work with the sisters. You... You have that correspondence. To work with the sisters, doing good. That's right. And would you like to do good? With all my heart. Where is Althea? Althea. Yes. Why Althea, finally? Tell me. 
Is she the last one left? Marty, of course, died in the apartment. Marianne died in the shootout. John and Jack. I know what happened to John and Jack. Do they write you? No. They don't? If they did, I would not accept their letters. Oh, yes, as they were traitors. Were they traitors? If it amuses you, you may say that they were. To what? All right. To what? To the cause. What was the cause? There was no cause. But you've said that they were traitors. That's right. But to what, if not the cause? And they sinned. Against what, if not the cause? We all sin. But can they have no forgiveness? You say you have found forgiveness. Can you not forgive them? Which of us is perfect? You wrote that Althea was perfect. I wrote that? At the beginning. You may read my letters if you like. I may read them with or without your permission. They were found in the apartment. Ah, uh, yes. And so are in evidence. Of course. And further, you who believed in the cleansing force of violence are powerless to stop me, as power comes, as you've said, from the end of a gun. I have embraced Christ and have renounced violence. But you will not forgive traitors. I said I've embraced Christ, not that I've become him. You believe that the time has come for us to release you, an old woman, not that she deserves compassion, but that she no longer poses a threat. Is that the gist of your plea? Look at me. All right. Am I a threat? Where is Althea? I don't know. If you knew, would you tell me? What can that question mean? Who are the blind? The blind. While the unafflicted may toy with the notion. Yes, I wrote it. The, the... Who are the blind? I don't know. But you wrote it. The... Yes, I wrote it, but people change. You change. Who are the unafflicted? I... Would that be you? What is the affliction you escaped? I... Which allowed you such freedom? Hovering at the margins of the real, we strive to disabuse ourselves. They were the writings of a child who had the facility to ape that language, I confess. Now I have nothing more to confess. Where is Althea? I don't know. I don't believe you. What if you're wrong? Then you must stay in prison. How is this different from an inquisition? Or whom would you have judged? And on what basis? That people may kill as they are moved or inspired and then claim they've had a vision of repentance of... Yes, all right. Or simply claim the biddability of childhood? I would like to go free. Then tell me where your partner is. Is that the condition of my release? John and Jack renounced their crime by indicting their associate. Oh, yes. That's well put. Which differs, you must agree, from a mere profession of faith or of repentance. Yes, you are correct. It does. It was a quantifiable act. All right. Of which the court took notice. Fine. How else could it judge? By the ability of the claimants to awake compassion? Do you live in that sort of a world? Did you? You understand my problem. You were lonely after she left you. Yes, let's do that, too. You were lonely when she broke up with you. Yes. When she abandoned you. If you will. No, that's your word. Yes? In the letter you had passed to her? That was so long ago. That you illegally had passed to her? I thought she had abandoned me. You were imprisoned. Did you long for your children when you were apart from them? She ceased writing to me, and I pined for her. Where is she? I don't know. You don't know, and yet you wrote last month to your attorney, I would like in freedom to... That letter was privileged. Once again. That was a privileged communication. Gaze upon the morning star and asked him... No, your interception to see if he could aid you in that. 
Your interception of that letter to my attorney is a crime. Perhaps, if one believed in the state. Irrespective of. To gaze, you wrote, again upon the morning star. What is the morning star? The morning star is Venus. In this context? It was the star of Bethlehem, and as the star of evening, shone into the cave where Christ was born. In this context? That's what it means. Yes, but the phrase also occurs here. In your Concordance Bible, in the book of Esther, where in the margin we find Esther, who is also Astarte and Ishtar, whence our word star and a love letter, notes, written in sequestration to Althea, I long All right. to gaze once again upon you on the morning star. Where is Althea? You understandably assume that which is... Withheld. You assume that everything that's said here, which is of necessity, opaque. Why would it be opaque? Must of necessity be criminal and shameful. That it must be sexual or... Is love between two women shameful? It's private. Do you understand? As sex between any two people is private. The unhealthy may confuse the wish for privacy with shame. Do you want me to tell you my fantasies to... Everything said here is said in confidence. Oh, please. You inform the board. All I forward to the board are my conclusions. How are they arrived at if prurience... Am I prurient? And curiosity are confused. If a desire for privacy is confused with... I, one lies, wait, or say, one withholds. Everyone who sits there lies, I understand, I would. You would? To go free, yes, of course. And yet, and yet, knowing that you indulge in the name of what? Psychology, your penchant for what? Observation? Is love between women unnatural? Everything in prison is unnatural. Would you like me to set you free? How would you set me free? No. Would you like me to set you free? How am I bound? Will you answer me? You wrote, the troubled cannot be freed by psychiatry. That they do not lack psychiatry. That's right. They lack love. Do I lack love? Of course you do. I lack love. That's why you're so frightened. I'm frightened. Why? Because you're leaving. Has my work here given me love? It's given you structure, which is to say repression. Sexual repression? Of a deeper desire. For? Submission. To? God, which is why you mock the possibility in others. I understand, believe me. Where is Althea? Put it down, don't you see? You are chained to the past when you could be free. This is the lesson of the Christ, to let the dead bury the dead. And that is all that it means. And to be reborn. It's not mystical that you need to be frightened of. It is not an ordeal. It is a gift. The end of regret. It's faith. It's the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? It is that spirit which unites the Father and Son. It is a mystery, which is the essence of faith, and Neither God nor human worth can be proved. That finally there is nothing but spirit. In time, I could, by reason, Anne, bring you to faith. I know your heart is heavy. Why is my heart heavy? Because it's stone, which must break to be opened. Will you break open your heart? You can lay your burden down, and he 
will take it from you. I can't do it for you, Anne. I wish I could. He can. But it requires an act of courage. Where is Althea? Are you sure? Are you sure? I... If I can help you, I'll help you. Why would I not? You know I've helped others. You know I have. Yes, thank you. I understand. What do you think that I've been doing here? Is it impossible that I was sent here or finding myself here, found that I might do good, might that not be called the intercession of God, whose only worldly influence and is through the human soul, which is to say, through sinners, there was a young girl who killed and was confined to prison, and a man gave her a book. Where is Althea? I don't know. But you wrote to her. I wrote of her. Oh, yes. I thought she was dead and searched for her in other women. All right. Assured that their outward form was but a necessary veil to keep the mystery from profane eyes, a common reaction I learned of the widow. For all I know, she is dead. For all I know, she is somewhere in custody. And someone has been holding her all of these years. Oh, you say it doesn't happen? Does it? That the state... Are you an enemy of the state? I was. And now? Are you an enemy of the state? No. But you were? Yes. What are the ways in which enemies may be reconciled? All right. These are the ways in which enemies can be reconciled. I was young and I was a fool. Surrender of life, of property, of land, or of prejudice, which I understand to mean of a previously held belief. Have you done nothing in your youth? Or, in plainer English, enemies may be reconciled if one or both recant, revise, or surrender their position. Which do we find here? I don't know. How can I know unless you tell me? Do you enjoy my discomfort? You chose to come here to see me. That's right. Seeking approval for your request, which request may only be obtained through my endorsement. Which may only be obtained from you. That's right. All right, why? Because I have been delegated that power. And why you? As a representative of the state. With all your imperfections. Did you assume your request might be effected without at least some discomfort? I will not say anger, shame, or hatred on your part. Did you assume I would not probe you? Delegating power. Oh, yes. As we find in your book, may be understood as cowardice, both on the part... Delegating power. And in your letters. No, I beg your pardon. In your talks, in your pamphlet, in... And they're hardly talks. And delegating power, yes, must imply superior, superior. But wasn't that the essence of your movement, teaching the ignorant that they have the power? The power wasn't ours to give. It was theirs. And you were simply reminding them. We. Is that what you were doing? We thought we were awakening them. How had you been awakened? I hadn't been awakened. Now I... Yes, but I'm asking you now. What did you think then? How could you wake them if you, if... My my political views of that time... By what superiority on your part? Do you see? Uh Aha. Had you been granted that revelation? My political views at that time... Go on. Having been convicted and those views offered in... Illegally. Whether illegally or not, in support of my guilt. They, after my conviction, 
must become moot. Yes. According to the law. All right. And you debarred from interrogating me concerning them. All right. No, it's not all right. Or am I meant to be perpetually persecuted? But. No, no. What does it mean that someone has said this or that? Or mouth the doctrine. It's words. It sounds. It changes nothing. It's mere words. That's right. But you acted upon them. That's not what I was tried for. Unless it was a political crime. Was it a political crime? I... No. If my views could not be adduced in mitigation of my crime, they cannot be adduced now to extend my... To extend my punishment, separate the speech which you declare was mere foolishness. Except? And I agree with you. Except? No, there is the pamphlet and there is the crime. If they are linked, then I am being persecuted. If I am only being punished for the crime with which I was charged, I have served my term. I beg your pardon. You were speaking. When you taught in Algeria, all right? No, it's it's not all right. Who, God knows, has paid for her actions? When you, at the farm, at the apartment, strove to awaken the masses. They lived, as many do contentedly, in ignorance of their state, as many do today, as you do in their relationship to the divine. We live in ignorance. But you did not live in ignorance. We felt that we did not. Then how had you been elevated? Do you see? As you say, again, you have been. I have been raised by Christ. Yes, but they, if they lived in contentment, then... If they lived in contentment, they were oppressed. But what raised you? to that understanding, a book, a man, a moment of enlightenment, the religions would say, the experience of grace. I was not writing about the man. No, you were writing about Christ, but the language you used in your talks, it's the same language hovering at the margins of the real. Don't have to demean them by calling them talks. What are they, speeches? But they're hardly talks. What are they? Interactions or thoughts, perhaps, meditations. Well, yes, but you see, the inability to call things by their names may lead in you and in your, what did you say, revolution, no less than in the state, to imprecision. And in our case, certainly has led to error. Or did you act in error? Did you act in error? When? What is murder? It is the unlawful taking of a human life. Indeed it is. Did you commit murder? I was adjudged guilty of murder. Did you commit murder? I have worked for 35 years to discharge my debt to society which society still sticks upon the one point. What is that point? And why should I believe that you might be a member of society if you're incapable even of a half hour's courteous interaction with me in this room, a person from whom you desire a great service, and yet you are incapable of stifling your rage? That's not true. That you should be reduced. It's simply not true to comply with the requirement of the state, that you divulge the whereabouts of your accomplice who killed alongside you, which legitimate, which is to say lawful demand, you characterize as an inquisition. My father is dying. Should- I'm sorry. Should a person not be left a sense finally? Go on sense of dignity. I have no doubt that you consider yourself, I will not insult you by using the term rehabilitated, 
I don't know that I know the meaning of the word. It means reclothed, its implication being restored. No doubt, but how may one be restored who is, in the eyes of the state, bound or free, always a criminal? How can the criminal not see that the same sense of entitlement which led him to crime leads him to demand a societal amnesia regarding his conviction? Who wrote that? You surprise me. Who wrote it? Lombroso. And at what conclusion did he arrive after a lifetime of his studies? You impress me. At what conclusion did he arrive? That there is no solution to the problem of crime. Except? Deterrence, punishment, and incarceration. And what did he say about rehabilitation? You impress me, Anne. Yes, you said that criminology... Criminology, as any study claiming the imprimatur of science, must rest upon observation, but that all observation in prison is corrupt. Go on. For there all function under unnatural restraint, and one can no more usefully reason from measurements made there than from that of wild animals caged in a zoo. What is September 25th? It's the anniversary of the robbery. How might others understand it? Who? We have very little time. It's the anniversary of the death of the two officers. And who might understand it as such? Their families. Their families. Have. I know. For 35 years. I know they have. That, on these occasions, in that anteroom. What do you want? While I and while my predecessor. Yes, the families. And Mrs. Fisk, who is. I know who she is. Who is she? Officer Shay's. Yes. Do you see? Officer Shay's daughter, which became the definition of her life. She could not attend. Her son could not attend as he is caring for his mother who is ill. And they write to say what? What is their request? Call the guard. To ask what? Call the guard. To plead in the name of justice that you be left to die in prison. My task is to overcome my feelings and attempt to rule if I can impartially upon the case. I understand your feelings. Is that so? And in spite of them and mine, attempt to employ, yes, I think I... What are they? My feelings? Yes, what are? Is it beyond you that one might succeed in keeping them in check? And that it's laudable? Is there a name for this? All right. Is it called reserve or circumspection or... All right. Might it be called restraint? You would like to go free. Everyone here would like to go free. Feeling that you have served more than a sufficiency of what you see as a cruel sentence. Do you think that it was cruel? I understand the mentality of the judge who imposed it. Do you think it was cruel? I like to think it was imposed in sorrow. I believe your actions frightened him and that he acted to protect those he had sworn to protect. Was the sentence cruel? It was cruel to you. And can you act to end the cruelty? Or would that be to rely upon your feelings? In this case, kindness. It is an awesome power I have. Yes, it comes from the end of a gun. As did yours when you killed those officers. And I assure you, I know I, no less than you, will be held to account. Do you mean we all shall be held to account in heaven? Does not such a view legally unfit you to judge me? How would that be? To invoke a system which... Religion? Which... But you invoked religion. A system which, I beg your pardon, 
I judge to the best of my ability according to the law. It is not my personal theology, nor bias, nor indeed knowledge of human nature, which permit me to judge, but a dedication to the law, which obligates me to do so. And how is Mrs. Fisk? She is unwell. Is she seriously ill? She has dedicated her life to your punishment. I would assume she is. You cried when your friend abandoned you and wrote, to plead with her to stay with you and wrote your parents with the first terms of affection since you were a child asking for comfort as you had been harmed. Now you want to go free and appeal as does a child to those in power seeking out power. What do you say about me? Say about you. Yes, when- I don't speak about you. At a dinner party to a friend if someone asks you, they must ask you. Very little anymore. Oh? Yes, you were famous once. All right, at the end of the day, can you not overcome your animosity? As you have, Kathy? Officer Shea, had he lived, he would have been what? Had he lived, he would have been 81. Is that an old man? Is that an old man? You want to live? Yes, I do. I assume all people do. There was a time you didn't care to. That's right. Do you remember that? Yes. You came to us then with a different request. Well, it's a long life. And the longer we live, the more we see things change and bring us back to the beginning. And people cannot change? I've yet to see it. But can you imagine it? I think I can. In what would it consist in your imagination? How would it be established by a record such as mine of service and of study? Or else, what are you doing here? If you cannot conceive an instance where your work could help, what do you want of me? What do you think? I think you want revenge. You feel subjecting you periodically to my questioning constitutes revenge? Do you know what it's like to vacillate between the desire to please, to, to embellish in order to please or to be reticent and fear your reserve will be misinterpreted as sullenness? When your freedom is at stake, your very freedom? Well, you broke the law, didn't you? And you wanted to die as you once were thwarted in love. Poor thing. And counted yourself privileged by your grievance as you were imprisoned and your lover abandoned you. She left you. And... All right. You wanted to die as if she could be with you. In prison, what? In death? And dramatized yourself as if no woman ever suffered in love. You wrote about her face dreaming of her face, about the power of dreams. What is the power of dreams? They have the power to release us each morning, period, is a new vision, period, of a previously unsuspected depth of sorrow. Many were moved. Some thought you should have been allowed to die when you wanted to die, and some prayed for your soul. Why did they pray for you? Because I was in pain. No, they prayed for you as you expressed yourself well. Can you not control your hatred? As you have done in your book. The love of Christ washes over me and the sweet balm of forgive. You congratulate yourself for Christ's forgiveness, but you forgive no one, do you, John and Jack? <sighs> Call the guard. Sit down. I said, sit down. I'll see you in preventative detention. Do you hear me? For how long? Indefinitely, which means forever. For nobody cares, Kathy. Your family has left you. Your lover abandoned you. The officer's families live to desire your death. The public no longer remembers your name and no one cares. Why do you care? Because it's my duty. 
I think you're a voyeur. Do you? I think you're a frustrated old woman who gains enjoyment from her charade of probity. Yes, I read that article. That you are jealous. Of? My life, which you enjoy as a romance. Of your life. Of loving women, of? Of violence? Yes, of course, of violence. Of violence and sex? Absolutely. Are they related? Or are they only linked in your sickness? And what sickness is that? You. I have surpassed them. Have you? Why do you care? Because I represent the state. The state? Yes. Without which who can make consequences equal? Who shall rebuke the evildoer? Who comfort the luckless? Who ensure the reward of the competent except the state? whose existence you decry, Uh, first in your movement, then in Christ. How are the two then not equal? Tell me that. Every society has punished the murderer. If not, what meaning of society? But ours, you feel, should not, as you have suffered enough. For whom? For yourself? Indeed, for who would embrace suffering? For the state? No. For the state confines you not to cause your suffering, but to ensure freedom to others. As I might kill again. So that all will consider their acts and regard their consequence and control themselves. Why do you plead to be excused? For the same reason you considered yourself free to kill, as you are better. You know better. You are entitled to explore the higher realms of behavior to savor this or that thrill and call it theater of the real, theater of the street, violence is cleansing. I read the pamphlets, I read that filth. They were the folly of youth. They were not the folly of youth. They were evil, wicked heresy. What do you want from me? Renounce them. I have renounced them in my embrace of Christ. I don't believe you. How could I make you believe me? Would you like me to beg? You made the policeman beg, and then you shot him. Would you like me to beg? I would like you to see. To see what? That you systematically deny that throughout your life, your revelations, I would like you to accept your responsibility. Why? Because I represent the state, and that's my duty. How would you know that I had accepted? I... No, what? What would signal my conversion to you if not my acts here? Hey, tell me what you want. What you want, finally. I want to save you. Why? Because you have a soul. How do you know? Because I have a soul. Those who have served a life term, those who have killed. I have no problem with the word and have served a term of 35 years. Your sentence is indeterminate. May be released. Because? Through lack of opposition by the state allowing the usual definitions of the indeterminate sentence. Through judicial lethargy or sloth, indeed, through chance or mischance. But but finally, if that release seems to the state the path least likely to bring upon itself additional work, anxiety, or trauma. Yes, that's right. And my question to you is, how could it be otherwise? Unless you were the special case, and why would that be? I thought. Yes, I thought this meeting would be different. Why? Because it was the end. You thought it was the end because? Because you're leaving. Well, then it would be the end for me. Why are you toying with me? Your replacement must endorse my parole based upon my behavior, based upon time served. Far. But the courts have denied. Far in excess of that served for any similar crime. We have discretion which a new, non-prejudiced, impartial official must see, which so prolonged incarceration 
they must see as cruel and unusual punishment. The courts have ruled. Much of it, of course, at the, the instigation of the Andersons, of Mrs. Fisk, of the Policeman's Union, of... And are they not entitled to protest, to... They're gone. Those who were affected, the policemen, the, they're gone. Mrs. Anderson is not gone. Mrs. Fisk is not gone. And a persistence in my contrary to all precedent. Do you believe in justice? And the court's refusal to hear my latest appeals? Do you deny the rights of the Andersons or of the police union to protest? I beg your pardon. No, you protested, didn't you? With violence, with... I... And called it protest, even though it was crime. And the courts have ruled you are involved in an ongoing criminal conspiracy, which crime has no statute of limitations, which... An ongoing... You communicated with your... Please. Criminal partner, a fugitive from justice. And so... You've given me 35 years for for essentially refusing to... You might have left after the initial minimum. For refusing to inform. I have repented my crime. I have served that sentence four times in excess of that, which you would have imposed on a mere criminal. I am an old woman. I have done wrong. I have spoken my mind. My father is dying. It's time to let me go. Yes. Yes, I know she's tired. Yes, I know. I'm finishing here. And then I'll come out. Yes. All right, go ahead. Mrs. Anderson. That's right. She stayed as usual to hear. Yes. And what will she do when you tell her? When I tell her what? Of my release. I beg your pardon. You haven't informed me of that decision. No, that's right. But you've decided to release me. Which you say because? You changed my cell for out processing. I've served my time in justice. As you know, you know that. You say you would like to save me. And I thank you for the thought truly, as one who has found that which unites us, which is the spirit of God, which is the soul. I am imperfect. I am headstrong. I am arrogant. I am endeavoring to cleanse myself in accepting that solace offered to me, the sacrifice of Christ. Oh, please, it's a sham. Is it my resurrection you doubt? Or is it the existence of God? Do you think I've worked here all these years and have learned nothing? For don't you see the two are the same? It's a ruse, Kathy. Is it impossible I have found God? We read that sinners found God. Do you deny it, Anne? It's in the Bible. Do you think I don't know what you suffer? It's called doubt. It is the bar on the gateway to belief. Christ doubted himself, and in Gethsemane, he doubted God, Christ. And how can you believe that which you disbelieve? That prayer must come first, Anne. Lord Jesus, I have sinned. Is it not possible? If Christ rose from the dead and that he saved me, even me, that I was sent here to remind you, pray with me, Anne. Lord Jesus, I have sinned. You think I haven't prayed for you, for the others, for myself? Have you? I think it was less apparent to me than to you that I should question the worth of my work here. What did you pray for? Do you think I'm blind? What did you pray for? I prayed for? for forgiveness. And did you find forgiveness? Then the time has come to stop praying for. 
and to pray to God. In the midst of all this suffering. And pray to God. For one sign. How would that sign appear? And could it be the plea of a murderess that you accept Christ? He told us, Anne, the heart is a stone. To open, it must shatter. I, it's called doubt. I, open your heart and be saved. Lord, who ordains all things, who took the most depraved of women, and bid her to your side to be the queen of heaven, who blessed the good thief with the vow that he would that day abide with him. Thank you for your miraculous gift of grace to this poor wretched sinner. Thank you, Jesus, for permitting me to pray. Kathy, it's a lie. No. It's a lie. Then Christ is a lie. You say you asked for a sign. Yes of redemption it's here before you no then tell me what a sign would be if you revealed the location of your accomplice no i don't know it kathy yes i know it's a lie no you suspect it's a lie i'm asking you to trade suspicion for faith where is althea i don't know you asked what a sign would be that your heart has changed I cannot confess to that of which I have no knowledge, even to save you. If your heart has changed. My heart has changed. Then? But how can I confess to that of which I am ignorant? How? How? Only in this room. The ultimate corruption of power is the belief that it can do all things. But with all its power, the state cannot compel me to confess that which I do not know. The state. Not the state, I swear to you. The state does not have the power. Just you and me, for me. Neither to suspend the natural laws, nor to force me. Kathy. To corrupt my. Only in this room. They pleaded with Jesus. Come down from the cross if you are the Christ. Is it absurd to ask for a sign? The sign was not that he descended the cross, Anne, but that he did not. That is the meaning of faith. Not to go free? You disappoint me. Confess and go free. How does this differ from an inquisition, which the laws in their wisdom... Kathy. No, the state does not have that power to put me on the cross. To... I have that power. Do you understand? I have to choose and you are in my power as was the officer when you shot him to death. Kathy shot the guard. Althea stood over the second officer and shouted, he's a witness. He crawled on his side away from her and Kathy shot him. No, you have put yourself into a false position. You are a truthful woman. You've asked me to confess, to establish my suitability for release, but you know that it is against the law. It is a criminal misuse of power. I asked for a sign. And if not, what? Am I a witch? Do you think I'm the devil? Do you want to end your time here in absurdity? But then it was all absurd, was it not? your good works and your life of sacrifice? And what has it brought you? Your child abandoned you, your husband left you. You have grown old. I have love waiting for me. You leave here with nothing, having your correct accomplished nothing. Which of the clients you've seen over the years has done anything but lie to you? Well, you took notes. And you would lie too if the machine which you serve had oppressed rather than co-opted you. You served a corrupt state in a failed institution. That's the story of your life. Why? All right. For the sick thrill of hearing women cry and lie to you to see them wonder, can I seduce her? 
and you could have had any of them. Yes, as I did, had and have nothing. Having had nothing but power and too weak to use it, and now it's gone. It's you who should confess, and then you would be saved. Give me a cigarette. I haven't smoked in years. Does a girl have one? I don't know. And shall I tell you what I plan to do? When? I beg your pardon? No, you haven't said it. But I've changed yourself for out-processing. Isn't it true? No. I've moved your cell and have removed your book, your manuscript, and all of your drafts and notes. I want the location of your accomplice, and unless you give it to me, I'm going to burn the lot. <laughs> do you fear me that much? Yes, I do. Why? Because you killed. Your successor will set me free. That's she, isn't it? In the outer office. She will set you free because... Because she's young, because she's new, because she's stupid and believes in the perfectibility of man against all evidence. She will read my book and be moved by it, as will anyone who reads it. Because? Because it reassures the frightened, their passivity will keep them safe. You didn't hear me. I'm going to have it destroyed. I will walk out of this office right now into hers and tell her of your threat and file a complaint against you, which must be heard and the state will be debarred by law from destruction of my property. In fact, they will be forced to review it, which is to say, read it and will be moved by it. Don't you see all of your notions all come down to the willingness or the refusal to use force in service of historical necessity. Marx was a fool and he was a Jew, no less a parasite than those he indicted writing. Words have no power? Only to misdirect. As in your book? By what universal test do we know power? It comes from a gun. How else have you held me here? Through natural rights? Through a consensus of the governed? People with guns were paid to keep me here as someone feared me. They feared your ideas. Ideas more vicious and violent than mine are entertained every day in the minds of the most powerful people on earth. Doctrines more seditious are taught in the schools. They feared me. As they should. That's right. And I'll tell you about your brave announcement that you were interested in our sex. Between Althea and you. People are seduced by the forbidden. The weak are not terrified by this or that act of transgression. They're thrilled by it. Thrilled by it. What else is a newspaper? People are killed every day. And what are the weak frightened by? The dissolution of their country. The country is dying? Dying bankrupt and the Wastrel children squabbling about the will. He wrote well. It's nothing to write well. He fought well. He fought just as you fight, with the weapons at hand, with your guns. Our guns are used to enforce laws made by whores, thugs, and thieves who bribe their way to office. How many times must you see it? What replaces it? It's long been replaced. We were looting an empty house. The officer was there. Yes, that was too bad. And you shot him. He was carrying a gun. He could have done better to use it. Anne speaks into the intercom. Did you hear that? Have it transcribed. I'll come out now to see Mrs. Anderson. You've just sentenced me to life in prison. Yes? For speaking my mind. Is that what I did? Do you believe in mercy? What have you done in your long service to the state that was a human act? I've done this. They'll take you back to your cell.
That Was the Anarchist by David Mamet, performed by Penny Arcade and Tammy Faye Starlight. Thank you.